Matt, I think before we get into Saturday, a, a final word on last night. It's sort of a, the perfect result, particularly the first half performance to take into this weekend. Yeah, um, we understand the context of that, that that game and that performance in the first half. Um, I'm watching it back last night and I fed this back to the players this morning. Um, a scintillating first half performance, really. Um, to see football played like that, um, and I was at the back of the stand, so I was almost in amongst the supporters as well. Um, hopefully builds uh, the excitement um, and the expectation in relation to what this group can, can achieve. Um, because they, they showed signs last night of a, such a strong unit when it was so-called our, our second string or second group of players or fringe players or, or players who haven't featured week in, week out in terms of the league. So I was really pleased with that first half performance and you know the second half was what it was, but I can't take away that 5-0 scoreline at half-time. Um, it was incredible to witness and hopefully the, the fans who did turn up in, in the numbers we spoke about enjoyed themselves. I'm not sure if you, you heard Jerry, uh, Jerry Barton's comments after the game when he mentioned about their goalkeeper had actually picked up an injury yesterday morning. It seemed that really that all of our goals came down that side where the goalkeeper had picked up the injury. So it's almost like they subconsciously knew. Well, we didn't know. Um, look, it's not for me to comment on other teams' injuries or, or performances, really. Um, I thought there some good finishes in there, regardless of who was in that or oh, fully fit goalkeeper. So that's almost irrelevant and a, and a side story to what can't take anything away from the, the, the scoreline, really. This is an opportunity now. Second, uh, Saturday's our second of four home games in a row. It's a real opportunity to, to string another mini run together it, in the run that we're already in. Yeah, exactly that. I mean, it's not a long time, but a two-week break from the league feels like a, a long time. Um, and we've got to go and hit this weekend as hard as we possibly can. Um, almost sandwiched in between other cup competitions. Um, but we had a good run of form in the league going into the, the, the mini break, so to speak. And we certainly look to, we'll be looking to continue that. Um, we know what it will entail. It'll be a difficult game of football. A well-organised opposition with, with some excellent players and a team who've picked up a lot of good form, certainly away from home. So, in terms of the, the opposition, we, we, we've got an idea of what to be wary of. I watched their game against Ipswich in the FA Cup last weekend um, and they were awfully impressive in relation to that and could have come away with a, a win. Um, I mean, missed a penalty and they missed a couple of chances as well. So, I expect a really difficult game this weekend, a really tough game. Um, but similar to what I've said previously, our, our mentality going into this weekend's fixture is absolutely key and that's my focus going into the players this weekend. I think with Oldham Athletic, the league table doesn't tell the whole story. Like you mentioned, their away form, um, three clean sheets in a row in the league away from home. And of course, they've got the threats that we're all aware of, of uh, Dylan Bahambula and Davis Keeler done. Yeah, and other players as well. And I think they've been hampered by, by injuries. Um, I think there's a lot of clubs at this level who've, who've not been able to get their best group of players out consistently. And I'm sure Keith is exactly the same. Um, we felt we had it towards the start of the season for a small period of time. I think Oldham have probably suffered with it for a, a longer period of time. And it does affect you, affects your form, your confidence, your, your strength for your squad. And, you know, even in the cup competitions recently, they've not been able to make too many changes. So, um, but they've started moving in the right direction. Um, so I'm sure they'll, they'll start producing the, the, some, some results to go on top of their, their the performances as well. But we've got to make sure that we're trying to be at our best this weekend. Um, and we feel, we, we, we're fully aware that if we play to our potential or we play to our best, then we'll give anyone a game on the day. Um, as always, we'll need a little bit of luck. We'll need to be resolute. We'll need to, to suffer at certain stages during the game, uh, no matter who we're playing. Um, but we've showed signs, in, in certainly in recent weeks and recent months now, that we can hurt opposition teams. Um, and that's where we'll be looking this Saturday. Obviously, you mentioned that Carl Taylor picked up a slight uh, niggle yesterday. How How is he this, uh, was, was he this morning? It's a shame he saw. He saw um, anyone who was at the game last night. So it was a, a hefty collision um, and it sort of hindered him for the remainder of that first half period. And we, you know, the old old saying where you try and run it off after half time and he couldn't quite do that. So um, it was a shame that his, his, his evening or his, his work last night was cut short. Um, and it's a race against time to be fit for this weekend. Um, he's, he's awfully sore today, so I'll be surprised if he's available, um, which is not ideal because obviously Tim Deang's suspended as well. So a bit more pressure in the middle of the pitch, but another opportunity for another body. Um, something we've spoke about, Craig, time and time again. Um, and with the amount of fixtures, no matter what the, the context of the, the game is, um, there's an awful lot of opportunities to come. Um, so whoever steps in at the weekend, I'm sure will be, be vying for that place. I'm trying to put in a performance. I think you were... Quite curious about Sam Stubbs' knee and how that would react uh, today as well. How, how is he? Yeah, he seems fine. Um, 
probably mentally at a little bit below because I, you know, all the adrenaline going into last night and um, there'd been a huge surge. So it probably will took him a little bit of time to switch off um, and switch his body off as well. But we expect him to be back out on the training pitch tomorrow um, and in contention for the weekend. Obviously, that was his first 45 minutes for the best part of 10 months. So maybe the, the, the Saturday game and the Saturday squad might be a bit too much for, to ask. Um, but we've got um, other competitions, obviously, the cup game the following Tuesday. So we want to keep him involved as much as we can. Now we've got him to a position where he's, he's selectable and he's back out on the grass and training and playing. Then we want to keep him involved. So um, the signs are certainly good in relation to Sam. And finally, I want to end uh, by picking up on something that you said um, away at Scunthorpe back in September when, when Dan Feasy had his final game with us about, you know, it's not just the team that are on the field, it's also the team that are off the field and it's the importance of getting together. We've got our, another a social this evening. Um, I'm not, how, how's your bowling? Pretty poor, to be honest with you. Um... I spent yesterday getting some prizes. Um, so I don't know who the favourites are in relation to the bowling. My, my team looks pretty strong. Um, I've got to be honest with you. So no pressure in terms of my teammates. So I'll need them to drag me through. Um, but we, 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 we know what the club's gone through. Um, and it's maybe gone through um, slightly hidden from public eye in terms of the difficulties um, in all departments, um, simply due to the pandemic and the, the stress it has caused individuals and, and units and teams, um, ourselves included in that. Um, so social events like this afternoon go a long way. Um, but I think it's only right that we touch on the, the, the feel of the club um, and the feel that we, you know, we've got a chance of achieving something um, with this group of players and, and this group of supporters and, and this group of staff as well. Um, because, you know, a lot of people sat at home and, and watched the scores come through for 18 months um, and would have felt a long way away from Exeter City. And, you know, it's, it's a cliche, but the Exeter City family is, is so, so important. And, and staff and supporters and players are just all together in, in relation to that. And, and now they're seeing a, a product on the pitch, which hopefully they can believe in. Um, we want the staff to believe in each other and, and the club and we want the players to believe in that as well. But main thing, we want the supporters to believe in this this team and this group. Um, and we're actually trying to entertain them as best we possibly can. Um, if they've not watched football for such a long time, then I suggest they come and watch us. It won't always be 5-3 and we won't always be 5 nil up at, at half-time. Um, but we're certainly trying to entertain and that's part of our remit to get get bums on seats. We know how important that is for our football club in relation to generating income. So we want as many people through the turnstiles as, as possible. But when they do come through, for it to feel like a family event, a, a social occasion, um, and for them to enjoy it and come back again. Um, and certainly we feel we're moving in the right direction in relation to that. 